Lots of outrage today over a rape sentence, basically saying a judge was too lenient uh, sentencing a rape, uh, a rapist to 45 days in jail, five years probation. But the outrage is really mo mostly on her, though, the female judge. Why, though? She blamed the victim. She blamed she the victim. Oh, God. She said he showed him the victim that she's. Yeah. She wasn't the victim. She, the judge said she wasn't the victim she claimed to be. So how can a 14, how does a 14 year old, 14, 14 years old, how does a 14 year old not be raped? I, I just don't understand that by someone who's of age. So. The judge kind of implied the girl was a little promiscuous, and that's why she gave this light sentence, what many perceive to be a light sentence. In the judge's sentence, she said that she had multiple par sexual partners and had sex with the rapist before. So the question is really, even if, you know, people are saying basically the judge is calling her a slut, she's promiscuous, even if she's promiscuous, let's get another uh, example, even if it were a hooker, if she says no, that's no, right, and that's rape, is it not? It is, and it's setting a dangerous tone, especially coming from, um, coming from someone in that capacity, coming from a judge, to say that your rape isn't enough, like you weren't raped because of your past. If We've been taught that no means no in this country, and we've been taught that if a woman says no or a man says no, that that's it. Like there's no middle ground. There's no questioning about the things that I've done in my past. So for a judge to come out and to say this, it's very disturbing to hear. I think it goes back to blaming the rape victims and saying you were asking for it. Or what did you expect him to do? I mean, it's, it goes back to that. And it, brings, it really is very, um, it makes me, it really makes me angry. It makes me so angry. I think when that nailed it, I think number one is no means no, especially when you're talking about a 14 year old. Now we're going to hear from the other side. The uh, rapist lawyer is talking, so we'll get that side out there as well. A 14-year-old doesn't really have the capability of consenting mm -hmm. to sex with an adult. So therefore, the law is very clear that it's rape. Exactly. Well, and the, the defendant, didn't, he admitted he raped her. He admitted it. So that's why there's so much outrage over the judge. And it's like another, it's like you've... You've hurt me again. Like, I've been raped once. I'm 14, too. Then the judge, the people who I'm expecting to protect me and to, to make sure that these laws are taken out is the one who's questioning my story the most. So that's... Yeah. And we, we had that rape victim last week. And you know how long? I mean, she almost didn't even tell anybody about it because of this reason. Mm -hmm. And this judge just supports it. Even if you actually go tell... You, you're brave enough to tell the police. You take it to court. You have to tell the court what happened. And the judge basically said, oh, well, you were slutting around, therefore you deserved it. She's 14. It's unbelievable. So the question for me is, what circumstances or, or what consequences are available for this judge to be judged on her ruling. Ooh, that's a good one. There should be some panel or some board that she has to uh, answer to and that should hold her accountable for this ruling that is absolutely horrendous. Well, I will say um, people who hear the other side may not think that the sentence is um, that outrageous. Maybe what she said, but maybe the sentence is not out so outrageous. When you hear the defendant's lawyer, um, Maybe some people will have a change, you know, in their minds. Yeah. But what could possibly be said, even if she showed Lolita. up <laughs> it's a, it's a Lolita naked in his room and said, do me. Yeah, it's the Lolita angle. Right. I, the what, what could be said to justify it? And this one, I think, is a parent's nightmare. You go to the circus, you're going to have the best time ever, and then literally tragedy strikes. The video's unbelievable. To see, I mean, they are known as hairialists, meaning their hair, it's the human chandelier, and basically with a contraption, their hair is holding them up, and you're watching, and next thing you know, they fall 35 feet, roughly, uh, critically injured at one point. We hope they're okay now. How does this happen, and what was the trauma to those who saw it? Can you imagine, you have tons of little kids there, and you can just imagine what you're going to have to tell them where they're crying, and when you look at it for the first time, you think it's part of the show. That's what's crazy. I think we take for granted how um, how difficult the circus acts are because we see them done flawlessly again and again and again. And I think it, the onus is on the circus to one up themselves each time. And I think we just reached a point of of critical danger. We are kicking off week six of the eight week challenge, so we're. Uh 
turning the corner and heading for home. And what is number one? Meals, right? When you're talking about derailing and cheating, we don't like the food we're eating. It doesn't taste good. He's going to tell us, Shannon. So Mark's here today, Mike, and he's going to show us how to spice up our food. You know you hate not having salt or sugar in your diet. So what can we do to make the food taste good instead of bland all the time? I'd like to cry in my food so I can get the salt. 